Well, more now on that top story tonight. Grant Shapps and his comments on Sky News uh, today already causing much comment, it seems, uh, on social media over whether people on benefits should have the same right to a spare room as owner-occupiers. Well, joining us to discuss the issue, uh, the Independence columnist Owen Jones and Robert Oxley, the campaign manager for the Taxpayers Alliance. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. I suppose we should ask you, first of all, in terms of interest uh, being declared, how many bedrooms you've got each? I just have the well, two bedrooms. Yeah. Me and my, me and my, uh, me and my housemate. Right. Just the tea. And I share with three friends, so I certainly don't have a spare room. No. Okay. All right. Well, you're you're qualified to speak on the issue then. Um, it really has got a, an awful lot of comments. What Grant Shapps was saying about his own children this morning on social media. Has he underestimated how emotive a subject this is? Well, absolutely. I mean, it's a bit the thick of it, I have to say, how it's evolved. But it does show it's a bit one rule for him, one rule for everybody else. He claims his children themselves are having to share. We now know, of course, if that is indeed the case. Um, and I'm not calling him a liar, but if that is indeed the case, then that is out of choice because he has more than enough bedrooms himself. And we've got to be clear about the measures which will unfurl tomorrow. 670,000 people will be affected by the so-called bedroom tax. Two-thirds of those people are disabled people. Uh, it will cost up to £80 a month for some of the poorest people in society. They'll also be hit by other benefit cuts, such as council tax benefit, disability benefits, um, and so on. And the reality is they're claiming people should go and downsize, and there is indeed a lack of uh, social housing to go around, and there is, as a result, yeah. overcrowding. But that's due to the failure of successive governments to build housing. There's nowhere for these people to downsize to. And just as one example, in Newcastle, 7,000 people will be affected by the bedroom tax. Guess how many uh, one-bedroom places there are? 50. Nowhere for these people to go. And instead, we should be building social housing, not blaming people like disabled people. But I suppose we should, we should reflect that successive Labour governments have failed in, that, in that building you're, of the social You're housing. absolutely right. But what, what of this issue, Robert, that uh, Grant Shapps is saying this is common sense, or common sense reform is the term he used, and the Department for Work and Pensions saying that uh, under the reforms, children are expected to share room if they're of the same sex under the age of 16 or either sex under 10. Well, there's, there's two things. Firstly, you know, as Owen said, it's the so-called bedroom tax. It's a testament uh, to the success of some campaigners on this issue that they've got it labelled the bedroom tax when they know it's disingenuous to label it a tax. It's a welfare change. Whether you agree with it or disagree with it, it's a welfare change. But you, you are, you are paying for having an extra bedroom. Effect. No, that what is you're the actually problem. saying you is that you're not paying to have an extra bedroom because that's designed to create more people who are out of you know, whether normal homeowners, whether they're going to pay for an extra room. What it is, it's a case of if you're under-occupying a property, if you do have a spare room, because those council houses, which as we both agree, successive governments have not built enough because it's such a precious resource. Right. You the, have the to have average, a measure that gets... average loss for a single empty bedroom, this is according to the DWP news release, will be £14 a week. How is that not a tax? Because a tax is a compulsory taking out of income. This is a welfare. But this you is will, compulsory. You will receive less uh, benefits. That is clear. No, no, but the look. point here is, is that you actually you want to get those people who are under-occupying properties. We have 385,000 families across this country. 10% of all people in social housing have a spare room. So what you want, when you've got 400,000 people who actually are overcrowded and overcrowded situations, you want to get those council houses into the people who need it most. Now, yes, this is a sticking plaster to a much greater problem that we haven't built enough homes. But ultimately, if you are going to have a measure, if you are going to have a precious resource like this, and it's going to be fair on the taxpayers paying for it, then vitally you have to make sure this resource goes to those who need it the most. Can I just say, I have to say, it is a testament to the desperation of your position that you focus on semantics and pedantry over what it's called, rather than what will be the it's devastating... Not, no, no, it's a devastating issue, because it's, it's, this, this could become this government's poll tax. Absolutely. Could, and, and which was never called poll tax, it was called community oh, charge. Absolutely. It's, it's, and not, the it's, time. Not gonna, sorry, it's not going to become the government's poll tax. For a starter, you go polling shows that the majority of people support uh, this no, measure. No, and it also it shows that 30% of Labour voters support this measure. This is something which which is why there were so few out at the protest at the bedroom tax that this is why people aren't back. You know, people first, aren't opposed firstly, to this. Tens of thousands of people took part in those protests, and frankly, it depends on how that question is phrased. The reality is, what people like you are trying to do is avoid talking about what will be the dreadful human cost. This is not a solution, as you well know, to the huge problems, the growing problems of, of overcrowding in this, in this country. And I'll give you an example. There were five million people in this country who are stuck on social housing waiting lists. That is down to the disastrous, disastrous failure of both New Labour and the Conservatives to replace the stock that had been sold off. 
kicking people out of their homes, which is counterproductive, not only about the human cost, it will cost money to rehouse them, you will, or you will force them into the private rented sector where housing benefit is even higher, it will not, it, or it will just drive people even further into poverty, but, uh, uh, it uh, won't solve the overcrowding what, what, problem. What, what, what is, is, is there actually a silent majority out there who maybe themselves are waiting for council accommodation with larger families, who may say it's quite right that we're allowed to get into these properties because we've got two or three children that need these extra bedrooms? Oh, there's a clear attempt to direct people's frustration and anger at the fact they are stuck in this overcrowded situation away from the people who are responsible, who are successive governments, and instead turn it against people such as disabled people, and as I say, two-thirds of the households affected include disabled people, or parents who've split up and have a room for their kids to stay, or people have a carer to come yeah. and stay over, or you know, people have split up in other circumstances. Instead of blaming the government, they say, go and blame your neighbour instead. But and that is the frustration and let's, anger that's been redirected. Let's part this, this question with you. Is part of the problem as well in terms of, of building social housing to actually answer this need, the local authorities just haven't got the wherewithal to do that at the moment? But, sorry, we've got to get away from this idea that it's local authorities' job to build houses. Councils don't build houses. Councils need to get out of the way of the developers who will build the homes. The fact is, is what we constrain, we constrain developers, the people responsible for building these homes. Well, developers say they've got more than enough land on, on their books at the moment to, to be able to go Section 106 build. agreements, yeah. they have to go through planning agreements. You have a situation where it, it, we are having to change our planning system to actually make it in presumption and flavour of planning because for too long, both governments, both me and I will agree that they haven't built enough, but this idea that the solution is always to spend somebody else's money on building these properties not when we are borrowing more cash no, no, than no, no, we no, actually just take Just to clarify, in. at the moment we've had a huge drop-off in the number of houses built, not because of any increase in regulations, it's the failure of the market to provide. We should lift borrowing requirements imposed on councils. Either the builders haven't got the money to do it. Exactly, no. but it will, pay for, it will pay for itself because they will get rents in and that will also bring down the housing benefit. Gentlemen, building. thank you for your spirited discussions all the time we've got for you. You'll have to get back to your bedroom. For the moment. Thank you very much indeed.